Hey guys, Savage Red Recover here. I just seen this uh, video from Preach and Abba, and I just wanted to react to it because of a couple of things in it that I didn't disagree, I disagree with. And uh, let's get into it. I want to look at the reality of what's happening in the today's topic. Steven Crowder. I saw a video he did, and I uh, wanted to react to it. So this is our response. To Look at this right here. You can clearly see this was just to be just to be clear before I've, I've been here before. It was not an indoor outdoor patio. It was Black Lives Matter riots. People are saying, well, you know what? This is what we have to do because peaceful protests aren't allowed. When when Colin Kaepernick peacefully protested, you told him to shut up. No, no, no one has a problem with Colin Kaepernick going to a park and taking a knee. People need to be clear. The problem there wasn't with a peaceful protest. The problem there was with a man who was paid to play football hijacking a multi-million dollar job to make a political statement. And people have the right to vote with their dollar and not support Colin Kaepernick. Man, if you don't get your whole persona out of here. Okay, my problem with that. You say he was making a political statement. What is the national anthem at every sports game? Is it not a political statement? Is it not a form of patriotism? So let me get this straight. You're fine with forms of political statements that you like, but the ones that you don't are unacceptable. And you don't see something wrong with someone saying, hey, I feel police brutality is unacceptable. I'm going to do this in a peaceful pro manner on a public. And people went nuts. All right. People, even veterans were fine with what he was doing, but everyone else went crazy because they didn't want to see that on their television. And now you ask yourself, why are these riots happening? It's because people didn't want to look at the reality of what's happening in the USA. So when you sit there, and you're like, why are you doing this on the television? Do it in a park where no one can see. Well, the whole point of awareness is to put it in places where you can see. The same way, the whole point of putting the national anthem everywhere is to remind you of that sense of patriotism. So if we could accept the national anthem, what is the problem with accepting a knee during the national anthem? Which he's not hijacking because he's not stopping the game. No, he's just doing it while everybody's standing. That's not, that is not what I call hijacking. The camera don't even have to be on him. So hijacking, yo, bruv, your choice of word is very poor. Okay, so what's disingenuous about this is if it was about doing it to where people could see it, then the cameras are going to be on him because he's protesting. So that's disingenuous because if, it, if he didn't want to be seen, then what is the problem with him doing it at a park? First thing. Second thing is, unfortunately, when it comes down to this, the argument is he was being paid to play. It is in his contract to whatever he signed that there are certain things he can do and he can't do. Protesting might be one of the things in the contract. Okay, People that are watching football don't want to watch a political statement. They don't want to be part of a protest. They don't want to be a part of that. That is indicative of everything else in our culture. Everything has become so politicized that it's like these agendas are put into games. They're put into our shows, our movies. Most people want to turn on sports and watch people play a sport because that's one of the last things that was politicized. Like if you noticed, if you look back, ESPN decided to go on this woke leftist kind of ideology in the last few years and less and less people are tuning in like a lot of people stopped watching ESPN because of how political it came now I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with their sentiment towards ESPN or any of these things but the fact of the matter is is if you've worked all week and you have to go to work and listen um, worry about HR and you have to worry about offending people and you have to worry about all this stuff and you watch any other television show or play any game or any of these things for you to have the one last thing or the last man sport or man place that you're allowed to have and you turn on the sports game and now you're having to be watching or be part of a protest that you're spending your money on like that's the thing like when you watch when you watch a football game you're watching advertisements which is making them money if you're buying sports sports gear for that team you're spending your money. So as a person that's buying something, if you don't want to buy this protest or support this protest, you're going to stop tuning in and stop watching. 
like there's nothing this there's nothing wrong with you not wanting to partake in something that's completely acceptable like it's disingenuous for it to be a problem and the problem is is the first amendment doesn't protect you from from your job just like if you work at a normal job you can't go and protest while you're working when you go to work and you sign you 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 take the job you're accepting whatever the agreement that you both agreed upon why doesn't Kaepernick wear Adidas uniforms instead of Nike uniforms or whatever brand like they used why doesn't he wear a different type of shoe like if you guys remember back when Michael Jordan played basketball like I think he got fined for wearing the wrong type of shoes like these businesses that have guidelines that you sign a contract to you have to adhere to those guidelines you don't have the same freedom when it comes to the job that you signed or agreed to do when you got the job so that's that's the issue that's the issue people don't have to spend money on something that they don't want to it's disingenuous to say that people are outraged or whatnot like i'm not going to buy a feminist movie if i don't want to watch a feminist movie when I decide to watch a football game and all of a sudden a feminist thing gets put in there, I'm going to stop watching it. Let's get back into it. Together, we will see it through. All right, that pisses me off. I guess we can go with that. You know, I see people talking about uh, Christians as well. You know, listen, we just need to uh, be peaceful. And you see these police officers in Flint who kneeled did you see by the way did you see those white guys who kneeled and asked for forgiveness that's not good but by the way keep in mind how racist that is right asking white people all white people to kneel and ask for forgiveness could you imagine if white people asked all <coughs> black people to kneel and ask for forgiveness for the cops who were shot last night most of us are not asking that nobody cares if you kneel most of us don't give your forgiveness all right oh my god i'm so nobody cares if you have privilege nobody cares about none of that that's not what people are asking for for the most part. So for you to straw man this movement as if it's a real problem, stop. It's not the reality of what's going on right now. It's not the white people, it's the organization of policing. Even if I see a black cop, I'm not good with it. I'm gonna be a bit, uh, cause I see a cop. I see a cop. Cause again, some of them were shot by white people. I understand. So here's another problem with this. Most white people don't like cops either. Like, that's just a fact. Like, we don't like cops either. And cops police everyone like dicks. Like, no one talks about it. a guy named Tony Timma. Tony Timma was killed in 2016, and he was suffocated by a police officer during an arrest. And he cried and begged for his life while he was mocked by the police that were over top of him. As far as I've researched, I can't find anybody that's been convicted of his death. Now that was in 2016, and that was a white guy that died the exact same way. You don't see it in the news. You, you don't hear anyone care about it. A lot of the problems is, is when it comes to this race stuff, people want to say, oh, well, if you were white it'd be different. If you got charged with the same crime, you would do less time. A lot of the times, no one's comparing apples to apples. It's always an apple to an orange. Here's a, an exact example of Tony Timba being an apple and Floyd being an apple. The only difference is, is the cop might have known Floyd. So there could be a personal thing. It could, it, there could be other circumstances besides the race. But with this white dude, we don't know if the cop knew him, but he called the cops because he had mental problems and was on drugs and needed help. And they did the same thing they did to Floyd. They suffocated him. And the problem is, is even though they want to say, well, not all of us want this, the fact of the matter is, is there's a lot of immediate attention of people that are in these movements that are getting a lot of traction or have clout that are saying that white people need to put their bodies in front of black people at these riots and at these protests to save a black life so that they can be used as a meat shield. 
in the comments in this video someone was saying that they're done telling people that don't want to listen but once they get power they're going to circle back and take care of the people that didn't support them like the problem is is even though abba and preach might not have anti-white sentiment there are a lot of people in the movement that do have anti-white sentiment and there are a lot of people that are getting media attention or they're getting a bunch of retweets they're getting a lot of a lot of attention on themselves that is wanting people to white people to apologize for something that we had nothing to do with that cop any of those cops killing any man how is any one of us normal citizens supposed to feel guilt for it when we like i'm not a cop i have nothing to do with the cops like as much as no one wants to admit it the same idea that feminists talk about is about equality most of us realize it's about supremacy a lot of the people that are getting clout and traction with this movement they want supremacy I have seen in many comments on many YouTube channels where people are telling me that white people are going to be getting the retribution that our ancestors did to their ancestors. Like, there is a lot of anti-white sentiment and there's a lot of stuff that's going down that has nothing to do with us normal people. My family came here from Ireland. I'm actually Irish. I'm English. I'm Native American and I'm black. My great, 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 great grandmother was half black, half Cherokee Indian. My family that's white, when they came here and they settled, they were from West Virginia. West Virginia left Virginia because of the Civil War and slavery. None of my ancestors were slave owners. None of them. Not one. But there keeps being that this narrative that I need to that I need to be sorry and I need to apologize and that I'm going to get retribution for something that I had nothing to do with. My family had nothing to do with. Like my great grandmother is black and Indian. But people just see my skin color and assume, make an assumption, which that is the epitome of racism. And if, but not all white people, certainly not in 2020, are guilty of the sin of slavery. As far as what I, am I going to kneel in a sign of peace to de-escalate? No, I'm not going to kneel and ask for forgiveness for something that I've never done. But I would like to sit down and talk to people. I would like to sit down and hear what the grievances are and what the goal is with this. The First Amendment allows you the right to protest. But that also, it, it requires, not requires, it should necessitate petitioning, right? The right to protest and petition. Well, what are they petitioning? Justice, okay. Derek Chauvin was charged with third degree murder. They're investigating the other police officers. And by the way, from the top down, from Donald Trump. Is that not justice? What do you, are you do, do you need him to be hung from the gallows? This does look like willful ignorance. That's not what they're asking for. If you think that people are still protesting because of George Floyd, then you aren't listening. And this is what I said in the other video. Everyone wants to flap their gums, but no one's taking the time to really understand the other side. And as a result, all we have is just noise being thrown out. I mean, sure, your fans are gonna be happy because they already share your views, so you're preaching to the choir. It's an echo chamber. Very easy to do. Same way SJWs do with themselves. All my people are racist, blah, blah, and they say it amongst themselves, so they feel great. But it's not meaningful in any kind of dialogue. And this is the kind of stuff I dislike. You're asking, what do they want? What is it they're asking for? They're asking for police reform. They're asking for better training. What they see is that systemically, there are a lot of problems with how police officers engage in a lot of stuff. And we're not the only ones saying that. Police officers themselves, are a lot of them are agreeing with a lot of this sentiment. But they cannot say it out loud because they're gonna lose their job. One famous cop that got out there, mm. he's not a cop no more. Yeah. He said that he wanted to sit down and talk, not with this attitude. You claim you wanna sit down and talk and comprehend, you don't, you do not. You have your own ideas and you're close-minded to that. And you try to disprove the other person. And actually, when that person disproves you wrong, you get pissed off. You know that episode? You know what the one I'm talking about. Yeah, he looked like a fool on that one. The point is, you do not want to sit down and listen. Caught up, whether it be our political views, our ego, wanting to maybe relinquish some ground, that we're not willing to concede the other party may have a point. And people are like, well, officers don't just shoot black people. Okay, great. We're not asking for police brutality to end just against black people. We want it to end, period. There's no black person out there that's like, we want police brutality to end against just blacks, keep killing the whites. Nobody's saying that. 
So if you really All right, so in these these last days with these riots, I've been in in many discussions and I've been br bringing up the point that the issue with Floyd wasn't necessarily based on race. We don't know if the cop was racist. The investigation, there hasn't been any evidence to my knowledge that he was racist. But seeing that a white cop was there with two Hispanic cops and an Indian cop or a Middle, uh, Middle Eastern cop, there were different races that were involved in, in that in general. So to say that it was just race-based, we don't know. On top of that, any time that I bring up the fact that this whole thing is about races being pushed through this movement, like people are saying about black men being killed, black men being killed is a problem. But the thing that's disingenuous is if you look at the statistics, black Black people only make up 25% of the deaths by cop. The, most of it is white folks. Mo some years, it's anywhere from two to four times the amount of black people every year. And when people, they try to disingenuously say that white people have privilege and we don't deal with the cops in the same way, it's not true because we're getting killed two to four times more per year. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, people are going to say, oh, well, blacks are only 13% of the population. That's true. But if you look at crime statistics, they make up 53% of all violent crime. So if 13% is making up 50% of the crime that is violent, at the end of the day, you're your over represent oh, your over your over representation in the 25% deaths is actually underrepresented because you're more likely to have a run in with the police because of the amount of black folks committing crime even if it is a small minority of the population of the black community the fact of the matter is is still 53% of all violent crime is being done by blacks and with white folks being, I think, 65 or 70% of the population, and the other 40, the, only, the other 47% of violent crime is split between whites and all other races. So we're underrepresented when it comes to violent crime, even though we are the majority, and we're still getting killed at a higher rate than is represented, is, than that's represented in the amount of white people that are dying. There's a lot of race that's being put into this. And the fact of the matter is, is like, are there racist cops? Yes. Are there people that are racist? Yes, I'm sure there are. But when you see a video and the cop doesn't say anything or do anything to say what he's thinking or his motive is just jump out there and say, it's because he's black, it's racist. That's not, that's not fair, because if I show you a video right now of a white guy and a black guy fighting, and they're not saying anything to each other, it's just a 30 second clip of them fighting, most people are going to jump on and say that the white guy is racist. With absolutely no context, which means that there's a clear bias, a clear bias, and an assumption of racism no matter what. The other fact that I have when it comes to this, is the, the fact that unless someone has a Facebook page and racist stuff on it, they're wearing a racist t-shirt, they're hailing the guy from Germany during World War II, and unless they're outwardly expressing with words what their thoughts are, we don't know unless we have a further explanation into an investigation to be able to understand what is going on in this situation. <laughs> because a lot of people want to keep saying that we no one wants to listen to the other side or we're ignoring people's lived experience but the fact of the matter is is that a lot of the times when any of us whites speak up we are told that we're privileged we're told that we've never lived it so we can't talk about it and also when we tell our experience it's what it's pushed away because the only time in this conversation that anyone's experience matters that goes against the statistics 
is when a black person is talking to a white person, or when the conversation is someone that is for the idea that there's police brutality that is only killing black folks or black folks at a high rate. So one side tries to give their point of view and the other one shuts them down because they're white and they don't believe it. But when it comes to crime statistics, the crime statistics are on my side. When it comes to interracial crime, 90% of all interracial crimes is a white victim with a black perpetrator, and it's only 10% with a black victim and a white perpetrator. I've even had people tell me that the FBI lies about their statistics and that those are not true, that, that they came from an alt-rights website, and the FBI lies. Well, then... If we can't go by the statistics that we have, then what do we go off of? If we're going off personal experiences, then why do my experiences not matter? Because I've personally had cops say that I testified to a crime to them that I, I've never testified or confessed or wrote a statement or any of these things, but the cops said that I did and there was no recording there was no video, there was no written statement, it was their word. This stuff happens to us as well. If you go on YouTube, you can find many cops planting drugs on white people. The issue here isn't a fact of racism. And it's not so much systematic racism. It's more of a us versus them and they're, they think they're above us. They're more of overseers than they are police. It's a lack of police accountability, because if they, the cops aren't accountable, then they're not accountable to any race. They're accountable to themselves. That's why that's the problem. By injecting race in it, you're diluting the actual problem, and you're looking at the people that are being overseen by the same people as an enemy. A lot of us people totally agree. Everyone agreed that Floyd's death was uncalled for and unnecessary and the, car, the cops should be charged and investigated. But the problem that most of us have is we don't agree with the rioting and the protesting. And when I say the protesting with the rioting, I understand that there's people that are, that are protesting that are, not, are very peaceful and they're not part of the rioting. But the problem is, is when you have these other groups that are hijacking the protests, if you're out there protesting, you're giving cover to those people. So, if everyone wants to protest, that's fine. That's completely understandable. But as soon as buildings and stuff start getting caught on fire and a police are being shot and ambushed and black folks are being killed and white folks are being killed, there's like 15 dead people at this point. Like, let the, let the police and everyone get a handle on this stuff and then go back to protesting. Because as long as there's 5,000 people in a city protesting it, and there's 100 people that are trying to riot, those 100 people can only riot if there's cover for them. And I understand that it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line. Like, you have a right to protest, to totally get it. But if we're trying to be, if we're trying to work together and we're trying to make things better, at some point we have to meet in the middle. And meet in the middle is destroying our own neighborhoods and destroying other people's neighborhoods and destroying businesses and killing people doesn't help anybody. It actually hurts more lives. Think that police brutality is a problem, then you should have no problem with this movement because it benefits you inherently. I don't understand these counter arguments. There's not a complicated aspect to this. Again, I'll say it for the 10,000th time, I'm not endorsing rioting, I'm not endorsing burning up buildings. Uh, even though in the other video we said we understand it, we never mm -hmm. said we endorse it or, or we're okay course. with it. But I get frustrated sometimes because like people with these platforms just sit here and they're tone deaf and, and they act clueless. And I'm like, did you do a Google search? So all four of the officers have now been charged and people are asking, why do we still need the protest? And I think to myself, do you not realize that the reason why the officers were charged is because people are protesting? Does that not strike you as somehow very insidious that people have to watch traumatic videos online every time a shooting happens? Then that video has to propagate itself and go viral before officers, DAs, law enforcement, everybody gets involved and all of a sudden charged or not. Does it not strike you as odd? Do you think I want to watch fucking videos 
of men being gunned down by police officers unjustly? But if I don't watch it and it doesn't propagate itself, then nothing happens. Why is it that the only time action happens is when I have to click on videos and get outraged? Why does that make any sense? How does that seem to you a system that works? That's why I keep telling people this is not about the four men being arrested anymore. This is about a judicial, judicial system, a policing system that just seems so dysfunctional. It only takes one cop to write up a report and a citizen gets arrested. But it takes millions of us to scream at the top of our lungs to be like, this is unjust before things move. Same thing with the Ahmaud Arbery video. They had that for a while. They had it for a long time. They didn't care. They didn't move on it. All of a sudden, it gets leaked to the public. And now charges are dropped and people are being charged with murder. I'm like, how does that make sense? Guys, we don't know how YouTube's going to react to these videos. They've been demonetizing, monetizing things. It's been super confusing. So I agree with him on that. The system is messed up. It does take millions of us. But again, it comes down to the police not having accountability. And the Aubrey video, I think it was, I don't think it necessarily was because it was released to the public. I honestly lightweight think that the lockdowns were starting to to lessen and they were they were pumping they were pumping it like getting the narrative out there because it wasn't at all like his death wasn't even in the news like it could have been reported on it could have like his death should have been reported on it should have like the situation as soon as they dropped the charges it should have been reported on like i i think there was hidden motives to that like that's just me personally but but yeah like at the end of the day this this comes down to a problem for all of us it's not like th this is the issue that i have with race for as much as people say that black people are are oppressed and all this stuff I'm not saying it's not true but right now in america for the last like five six years the only people you can talk trash about is white people is it I grew I grew up in like I live in Cleveland. You know how often I got tested because I was white because white people are assumed to be easy licks and to be soft. The knockout game was walking up on white people and knocking them out, just blindsiding them and sucker punching them. To think that there isn't a problem for us whites is is disingenuous. But at the end of the day. I don't really care if people don't like me because my skin color. I don't. I don't need people's acceptance. Like I. I just don't. But the reason that I bring this up is because there's always this narrative being pushed into the media that white people can't are racist. Only black people can't be racist. White people have privilege. We really like everyone has some form of privilege. Just like a short person has more has less privilege than a tall person. You know, like we all have some advantages and disadvantages. I think by using the word privilege, I think it's disingenuine because it's really just an advantage. And I don't believe in the premise of, of privilege because there's some black people that have advantages that other blacks don't. And there's some white people that don't have the same advantages as other white people. There's blacks that have more privilege than other. Like, it just depends. It, it, it's just like... It, it it's just like when you get a job it's the, the saying is it's not it's who you know like there's a lot of social things with networking and stuff like that's what social media has done is people youtubers and creators go to places and they meet other youtubers and creators and they they network and they build they build their brand like that like it's the same idea the only thing of it is, is if you're going to go, if anyone wants to say that America is more racist since the same amount or more racist since 1964, that's crazy. We elected a president that was black two times. Like a lot of people wanted that change. Like that's like, that's the facts. The same people, like they've been saying that Trump supporters are racist, but the same people that voted for Barack Obama voted for Trump. So, when like a lot of the a lot of the white voters, 
that voted for Obama when they voted for Trump. So they weren't racist for eight years, but as soon as Obama got out of office, they became racist. Like this idea of racism, just blanket giving it to people is just disingenuous. But that's just my take on it. I love these guys. I, I watch these guys every time they release a video. I just, these are some of the things that I don't agree with. I do agree with Steven Crowder on some things. I disagree with him on other things. Like I watch both content creators. That's just my take. I'm not in it for one or the other. I just saw this and wanted to, to give an opinion from us, a normal white guy with a small channel. And, and that's it. Like you guys can go into any of these videos that have to do with uh, Black Lives Matter or race or police brutality or any of these things, and you can see the large amount of it, uh, anti-white sentiment. There's all sorts of talking about uh, punishing whites and treating whites like crap, and how like I got called, uh, I got told in a, on a on a post on on YouTube today that I had white, I was uh, to take my white privilege. Uh, loving mayonnaise or mayonnaise jar or something like some reference to being white and liking mayonnaise I hate mayonnaise mayonnaise is just disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. I hate mayonnaise I don't like Miracle Whip. I don't like any of that. I don't eat pasta salad anything that has mayonnaise in it I don't eat But because I'm white I automatically like mayonnaise I automatically have privilege because I'm white I Literally live in Cleveland, Ohio. I live in Salamic Village I live on a street where there's literally only three white people on the entire street. And when I say the entire street, the street goes from, it goes from Turney Road all the way up to, to Warner. It's literally like three or four city blocks long. And there's only like three or four white people on the whole street. All my neighbors that live around me are, are black. My son is black. My son's mom's black. My my nieces my niece is black. Like my my all like majority of the people in my life are black. Like the only people that I have that are white are my is my sister, her husband, my mom, my dad and my grandparents. My my like my girlfriend, her son, but I've got my son's mom, my son, her daughter. I got her sister's kids. My sister is a foster parent who's adopting a little girl that's black. Like, I'm not, I'm not in a, in a little hick town or a little city where everyone's white. Like, I've never been in an all-white town or an all-white school. Like... I just, that's just, that's just not my reality and that's not my experience. Like if anyone wants to look it up, I'm from Wyndham, Ohio. I grew up on Community Road it's projects. I've lived in Youngstown, I've lived in Warren, I've been to Chicago. I lived in Chicago, I lived in, in Pittsburgh, I lived in Cincinnati. Like. I've lived in Cleveland since 2014. The first place that I ever lived at when I moved to Cleveland was 79th and Kinsman. It's a project called Garden Valley. I was the only white person besides my girlfriend at the time that lived there. Like, when I'm in, when, when I'm around, like if you, anyone that's from Cleveland or like look up look up kinsman kinsman is a bad part of cleveland <clears throat> i was told as a white dude i shouldn't be on kinsman and that's where i hung out all the time and i never had a problem to think that white people don't have racism towards us or we don't have assumptions made about us just because we're white isn't true a lot of us white folks are not mad about the protests. We're not mad that people are upset that Floyd died. We just don't think that black businesses and low, low income housing and people need to be getting their lives being just getting destroyed. The cops did something. The black businesses, the white businesses, 
these people didn't do anything so destroying their stuff like i literally seen a video on the news where a woman said that they're deliberately trying to screw up the white man's money like these people think that they're doing some racial justice of some sort but they're attacking black people i literally seen in the comments of this video that that david storm the 77 year old retired cop that got killed he deserved it because he was a pig it's literally what someone said on in a comment on this video that's horrible they shot him over a tv he was trying to stop a pawn shop from being being robbed because a friend of his called him he got a call to go to the pawn shop he had kids he had grandkids like, people need to quit having this idea. If if you want change with the police department, raise your kids to be cops. Put your people in there. Like, that's all I have to say. Do me a favor. Help me with the algorithm. Smash the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Hit the like button. Share this. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you what you think. You guys can hit me up at savageredrecovery at gmail.com. I'm also at, on Instagram and Facebook. If you guys want to check out my photography, go to my Instagram page. All right, guys. Salute.